Millions of words in 40 languages have been written about Hollywood and the magic of movie making. But one story never has found its way to the printed page. It remained for the silver screen itself to reveal this most fascinating chapter of them all. In a recent short, short movie, The Romance of Celluloid. It traced the many intricate processes in the transformation of Dixie Cotton into the celluloid strips upon which movie scenes are photographed. Another romance of celluloid starts as carload lots of motion picture film are shipped from the east by fast freight to the Metro Golden Mayor studio. What happens to this film after it arrives at the studio? We'll see. 7 a.m. Assistant cameraman Bill Riley reports to the MGM studio. He will first check in at the laboratory to pick up the film required for the day of shooting on the Marie Antoinette stage. 8 a.m. Assistant Riley reports to his superior, ace cameraman Bill Daniels, upon whom rests the responsibility and the credit for the beautiful photography of Monsieur as Marie Antoinette. 9 a.m. No, Monsieur arrives on the set. We say 9 a.m., but remember, Monsieur has been at the studio since 7.30, making ready for this first shot of the day with Robert Morley. Director W.S. Van Dyke calls for quiet. The camera trucks back, and now you are watching the first candid camera scene ever filmed on a Norma Shearer's set. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. All right, I will. I will. I was only trying to obey my mother. She asked me to be a good wife, but she didn't tell me how rude you are. How cruel. Another scene with Tyrone Power. What are you saying? Perhaps the great loves come with tears. Now the laboratory is ready for action. This most modern laboratory in the world today must work nights, developing and printing the scenes photographed during the day. The capacity of these developing machines is more than 50,000 miles of film per year, or the equivalent of 14 crossings from New York to London and return. How was this dark room scene photographed? Only one man knows the secret, John M. Nicholaus, top-ranking laboratory technician in all Hollywood. This amazing scene of negative in the actual process of development is the most difficult motion picture subject ever achieved. As the negative enters the developing solution, you see no image. But as you follow it across the screen, you see the image start to appear, first dimly, then darker and darker, until full development is attained. Now it is ready for drying. Just before the negative enters the air-conditioned drying chamber, most of the water is blown from its surface by this compressed air squeegee. After drying, the negative emerges from the end of the chamber and spins onto aluminum reels. Next to the polishing room, where it receives a high polish to remove any possible water marks. And now to the timing room, where a skilled technician is reading what are known as test strips. Here is determined, finally and exactly, to just what clarity each scene is to be printed, so that in the end, the completed picture will be uniform in photography. This is a corner of the MGM printing room, where a battery of five printing machines, there are 58 in all, is making prints from the developed negative. To explain this word print, if you are a camera fan, you take your roll of negative to the corner drugstore and say, give me one print of each. Your prints are returned on paper. Ours are a series of thousands of miniature pictures printed on strips of transparent celluloid. Each finished print of a Metro Golden Mayor completed production is made up of more than 150,000 miniature pictures. You see them now, clicking through the printing machine. Intense light flashed through these tiny pictures and then through a theater projection machine's powerful lenses magnifies them 40,000 times to create the motion picture you see on the screen. How about a visit to some of the stages where pictures are being made? Pictures you will soon see at this theater. We'll take the bugaboo of Hollywood along with us the candid cameraman, and we'll ride on one of Metro's own streetcars. Trams, we call them, and they're mighty handy for getting around more than six miles of streets on this 570-acre studio. Stage 29, where we meet director George Seitz and his crew, making ready to film a scene for the new Hardy family picture. Judge Hardy's children. Meet Lewis Stone as Judge Hardy. Mickey Rooney as Andy. Faye Holden as Mrs. Hardy. Cecilia Parker as Marion, and Betty Ross Clark as Aunt Millie. Andrew, man to man, how do you do it? 
You mean you really want me to tell you why I'm so successful with the women? I do, Andy. Well, I think it's just because I beat him to the punch. Who's this coming down the street? We'll give you only one guess, and right you are. It's Clark Gable, Myrna Loy, and Spencer Tracy, three swell people. You'll see them soon in Hollywood's greatest thrill since San Francisco, Test Pilot. This is my wife, Gunner. Oh, I've heard so much about the Gunner. It's almost as if I'd seen you before. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't take any more today. Just tell me about it as it happened, will you? The world's youngest elephant trainer, Freddy Captain's Courageous Bartholomew. And courageous this youngster is, as he puts Queenie and Sally through their tricks. Freddy is spending his spare time getting acquainted with the two elephants he will work with in Rudyard Kipling's Story of India, Kim. Right now, Freddy is preparing for his new picture, Lord Jeff. Queen, Sal, up! <laughs> And here the screen tests are made. Louise Reiner, well remembered for her magnificent performance in The Good Earth. Miss Reiner is making a costume test for the toy wife under the direction of Richard Thorpe. More good news for moviegoers. It's Clark Gable in another roaring action drama. Here's the way the screen's number one star will appear in Too Hot to Handle. Gable at his best in one of the best pictures of the new season. And now we're off to one of the studio's miniature theaters, projection rooms, we call them. Tonight is Hollywood's Night of Nights, the annual Academy Awards banquet. An exciting night it is. Hollywood is to bestow upon two people the highest homage it can pay. Uh, Miss Reiner, it's a great honor to present this to you for the second consecutive year. Last year for uh, your work in the Great Zigfield, and this year for your work in the Good Earth. It is an honor to present this award to you for the best acting performance of 1937. Thank you very, very much. This goes for the best acting performance by an actor in 1937, and we're very sorry that he's not here. To Mr. Spencer Tracy for his work in Captain's Courageous. And I'm presenting this to Mr. Louis B. Mayer, who is here to accept it for Mr. Uh, Tracy, who is too ill to, to appear at this, uh, at this banquet. Mr. Mayer. Thanks, Mr. Capra. It's a great privilege to be a stand-in for so great an artist. And great as he is as an artist, he's still a greater man. I, I think the right one to receive this is his fine wife, Mrs. Tracy. Thank you. For Spencer, and for Johnny, and for Susie, and for me. That's fine. <laughs> and so another romance of celluloid comes to an end. Both awards go to MGM stars, and fitting it is, for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer has always been the studio with more stars than there are in the heavens. This theater is proud to announce the appearance of all these stars in the great new Metro-Golden Mayor pictures to come. <laughs> <laughs>